Next speaker is uh, uh, Emad Ibrahim. He fr from uh, Lillian University of Technology, and he will talk about uh, modulation and polarization with uh, with intelligent surfaces. So, Emad. Yeah. Uh, so, hello everyone. This is Emad Ibrahim. I'm PhD student uh, in the Signal Processing Group at Lulu University of Technology. And today I'm glad to have this presentation on uh, polarization shift king with reconfigurable intelligent surface. So the outline of this talk will be as follows. First, I will give a brief introduction on the reconfigurable intelligent surface, risks, and its application. And after that, I will speak about uh, one of the promising application for RIS, which is to use risk for information transfer. And after that, I will speak about our proposed model to deploy this application that mainly depend on polarization shift uh, So a reconfigurable intelligence uh, surface is a Zimplin array that uh, consists of multiple sub wavelengths reflecting element. And this reflecting element is simply a small antenna that uh, re-radiates the incident wave without any amplification. And the basic idea is that each reflecting element is connected to a tunable chip, such as uh, pin light or varicor, and can induce an independent and controllable uh, fish ship for the incident signal. Uh, the attractive uh, thing about this uh, is it's a very energy efficient unit that it doesn't consume any power for transmission because it doesn't have an RF chain or a power amplifier but it only depends on the signal reflection on its element. Uh, in addition uh, to that using, uh, however, of course, it uh, consumes some power for uh, control and setting the phases of the uh, In addition to that, it's very uh, like uh, promising because it can shape the radio wave between the transmitter and the receiver. So it changed like our viewpoint to the conventional communication system, where in conventional communication system, we just try to uh, like uh, uh, optimize the transmitter and receiver just to compensate the channel effect. However, using this reconfigurable intelligent surface, we can now have a smart radio environment where we can control the propagation environment itself. So we jointly optimize the transmitter, receiver, and the channel environment. And here comes the idea of a smart audio environment that the environment is generated by nature, uh, but it's uh, programmable by design or more specifically by using reconfigurable intelligent services. So recently, uh, RIS has been uh, utilized for several communication applications, such as, for example, for in coverage enhancement. Uh, where in uh, this case, we have a user that suffer from uh, blockage, uh, doesn't have a direct link with the base station. So we're going to deploy some reconfigurable intelligent surface on some buildings to create like a virtual uh, link uh, to uh, increase the coverage for this particular user. And this uh, could be promising for a millimeter wave communication and tetrahertz communication, uh, where they usually suffer from uh, a high sensitivity to blockage. Also, it could be like uh, used to enrich the RT channel uh, with uh, more multiples. And this uh, like could be promising, especially in point-to-point -point communication where uh, it's hard in point-to-point -point, uh, uh, MIME communication, uh, given a line of sight environment to uh, provide a spectral multiplexing aid because the rank of channel metrics is deficient. So we could deploy some risk just to convert a line of sight environment into artificial uh, rich scattering environment and provide a spectral multiplexing gain even if uh, uh, in line of sight environment. Also, it could be used for simultaneous wireless information and power transfer, where uh, wireless uh, power transfer target uh, the transfer of energy without uh, the use of any physical lens, uh, physical cables. So we could use some uh, reconfigurable intelligent surface to like uh, focus the scattered wave to the rectangle of some internet of things device just to recharge zero load. Also it could be promising in a massive device to device communication where here there is act like a, a reflection, reflection hub that uh, adjusted phases to uh, 
add constructively the, the signal at the desired user and add destructively the signal at non-intended user. Also, it can be used to assist cell edge user, where cell edge user usually suffer from high signal activation for the, the desired signal, and also high interfering signal. So if we deploy like a, a reconfigurable intelligent surface on the cell edge, we can have a sort of uh, like a hot spot at the, uh, at, uh, the cell edge and the interfere, interference free region in the cell edge. Also, it can assist non-orthogonal multiple axes, uh, where uh, non-orthogonal multiple axes target uh, the multiplexing of multiple users on the same parent frequency, in the same uh, orthogonal channel. Uh, however, uh, non-orthogonal multiple axis is not always preferable. It's preferable only if the channel vectors between the users that uh, we are going to multiplex are uh, more aligned. So we could use the risk uh, just to align the channel vector between the user that, that we are, would like to uh, multiplex together. And all these ideas depend on one thing is that we try to program or control the propagation environment itself. So now I speak about uh, risk for information transfer. So uh, most of the current research, uh, like uh, deploy uh, or uh, focused on deploying a reconfigurable intelligent surface, just to assist communication between a transmitter and receiver. However, one of the promising applications for RIS that it can be deployed to act as an access point itself for information transfer. Where in this uh, application, as shown in the figure to the left, we have a, like an ambient or a dedicated RF source. Uh, and the idea that there is, we will we'll, we'll utilize this uh, RF source to encode the information data that exists at the RIS itself. And this uh, information source can be some sensors that is uh, connected to the RIS. Uh, and, uh, collect some measurement and would like to send this kind of measurement to a certain destination. And this application could be promising, especially uh, in wireless sensor network. In addition to these applications that we use RIS only for uh, information transfer, we can like uh, merge it with uh, uh, conventional applications that uh, assist communications to so have a, a transmitter that has information source one, and we have a RIS here that has its own information and would like to assist uh, in, uh, the conventional communication link between the transmitter and receiver using the conforming gain of the RIS. And they also would like to encode that data at the RIS uh, in terms of the reflected wave from it. So it can be jointly both uh, application. So in the literature uh, for this uh, particular application, uh, there are two main uh, schemes that uh, utilize uh, risk for information transfer. In the first scheme, uh, the RIS uh, is deployed uh, and uh, the alternate the states of the reflecting element in the RIS between uh, on and off state uh, to create a sort of amplitude shifting for the encoding of uh, the data uh, at the, uh, that exists at the RIS. Uh, so you can control the on and off state of the reflecting element in the RIS by controlling the amplitude reflection coefficient of uh, each element in the RIS. So you now have like a more advanced the reconfigurable intelligent surface that has uh, two freedom control over phase and control also over uh, amplitude reflection coefficient. And this like uh, complicates the RIS fabrication. In addition to that, given that uh, some uh, element in the RIS will uh, be turned off, so you underutilize the, the beam forming gain of the RIS. Uh, the second scheme that uh, exists in the literature for uh, RIS inform, uh, for information transfer is to use RIS uh, to perform a space shifting modulation. Where in this case, uh, the, 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 the RIS encodes the information data uh, in terms of uh, in the indices of the transmitter or the received antenna, uh, simply by maximizing the received SNR at the target uh, or the selected antenna index. 
So you create a sort of a spaceship king. However, one of the limitations of this scheme and in general in a spaceship king, that a uh, spaceship king will require a rich scattering environment to have like uh, uncorrelated channel vector among different uh, antenna indices. Uh, so in the case of line of sight environment, uh, given that the high correlation between antenna indices, uh, this idea we, will not work properly because if you are going to maximize certain antenna index to encode certain symbol, you are going to maximize the other antenna indices. Now I speak about our proposed uh, idea for this application that mainly depend on polarization shifting. So we propose a novel uh, risk assisted uh, information transfer scheme, spe especially uh, for a line of sight environment by encoding the information data in terms of the polarization state of the reflected wave from the risk. So the polarization state of, of the electromagnetic wave uh, simply describes the orientation of the electric field relative to the direction of propagation. And there are three main uh, polarization states for any electromagnetic wave, which is linear polarization, circular polarization, and elliptical polarization. In the proposed scheme, we rely on one of the promising uh, functions uh, that uh, re rarely utilized in the literature that uh, in addition to the main function of the risk that it offers some sort of pre-informing gain, it also can be deployed to uh, control the polarization state of the reflected wave, as shown in this figure where we have a risk and incident wave with certain polarization state and reflected wave with a controllable polarization state. Uh, the idea behind the risk polarization uh, uh, manipulation become possible thanks to the deployment of a dual polarized reflecting element. So uh, as shown in this figure, we have here is that it's constructed of a dual polarized reflecting element. The basic idea is that the dual polarized reflecting element uh, could excite two orthogonal polarization state and induce independent phase shift for each polarization state whenever a wave is incident to them. So in this figure, we have uh, a risk constructive of uh, slant 45, slant negative 45, dual polarized reflecting element. And this uh, figure represents a single reflecting element. We could see that we have an instant wave and the two excited uh, ref uh, ref uh, reflected wave, one from the slant 45 and one for the slant negative 45. And given that we have a full control on the phase shift induced for the red and the blue wave, so we can set uh, the phase shift difference between the two waves. So we can control the polarization state of the resultant wave, which is simply the summation of two waves. So if we sum these two waves, given that there is a phase shift difference equals zero, we have a vertical polarized wave. And if we sum it, given that we have a phase shift difference equals pi, we have a horizontal polarized wave. And in case of pi bar two, negative pi bar two, we have right and left circular polarized a reflected wave. And of course, for other fish shift, we have other elliptical polarization state. So using a dual polarized uh, reflecting element in the race will give you the ability to control the polarization state for each reflecting element. So uh, our uh, idea to, uh, to perform like uh, resource information transfer application, that we deploy a risk to offer two important functions. The first function that the risk uh, pin steers the incident wave toward the receiver in order to increase the received signal strength at the receiver. And the second function that the risk alternates the polarization state of the reflected wave as a function of the transmitted symbol. So in this figure, we have uh, like create a sort of a quadrature polarization shift again. We have uh, here selected zero, zero to be horizontal polarized, zero, one, right circular polarized, one zero vertical polarized and one one left circular polarized. And as a receiver, we have a dual polarized uh, antenna. Uh, so we can detect the received polarization state and, the, and detect back or, um, or demodulate the transmitted uh, symbol. In our simulation for this uh, like early stage work, we only addressed uh, the risk assisted primary polarization shifting. 
So the reach will only alternate the transition step between vertical and horizontal for uh, one and zero, respectively. We uh, have a line of sight environment and we assume uh, that, uh, and in line of sight environment, like the orthogonality between two, uh, orthogonal, uh, the orthogonality between two polarization state is maintained. However, due to the different orientation between this dual polarized uh, receiver antennas and the dual polarized reflected uh, wave, a polarization mismatch will occur. That's represented in this figure, that this is uh, the orthogonal reflected wave, vertical, horizontal, and this represents the orientation of the dual polarized antenna. So what uh, okay, here, what this effect of PETA is the polarization mismatch loss. So we propose two different scheme uh, for this uh, kind of uh, application. First scheme that is encodes the information data in terms of the polarization state of the reflected wave, uh, independently of uh, the polarization mismatch that occur in the wireless channel. And this means that as the receiver, we need to track and correct for the polarization mismatches that occur in the channel. And we propose a, a second scheme that uh, can offer a kind of uncoherent demodulation uh, that we uh, encode the information data here in the polarization state of the overall composite wire channel, which means that we include, uh, in addition, uh, we include uh, also the polarization mismatch that occur in the wireless channel. And this means that the receiver in the second scheme uh, doesn't need to do polarization mismatch tracking and correction. And this simplify uh, the receiver structure uh, greatly. Uh, so like uh, our simulation result is uh, as shown here, we have here our simulation parameter. And in this figure to the left, we like simulate the received SNR versus the polarization mismatch angle. And uh, when we deploy a risk of uh, surface area equal one meter square, and we could see for scheme one, that is a coherent detection that we need to track as a polarization state and correct for it. The received SNR is independent on the mismatch. And in case of scheme two, that uh, uh, uncoherent uh, detection, no need for tracking, polarization mismatch, and correction for it, the performance is dependent on uh, the polarization mismatch angle. Where uh, the, the received uh, SNR for scheme uh, two is uh, periodic with speed equal 90, and we could see like uh, there is a 3 dB loss. Uh, in case of polarization mismatch angle of 45 degree. Also in this figure, we simulate the bit error rate versus the risk surface area for the two scheme proposed. For scheme one, uh, it's in the, its performance is independent on uh, uh, the polarization mismatch angle. And for scheme two, we simulated for three different polarization mismatch angles, zero, 15, and 45. We could see that the scheme one achieves the best performance and the scheme uh, two achieves similar performance given that uh, there is no polarization mismatch angle as, uh, as shown in this uh, point. And uh, the performance of scheme two will become worse in case of uh, polarization mismatch angle increased to 15 and in case it increased to 45. So we provide two different scheme one uh, uh, with uh, best performance and one was uh, like a little bit uh, worse performance. However, uh, one of them need polarization mismatch tracking correction and one doesn't need this uh, kind of uh, tracking and correction. And as a future rule, we plan to exploit the real uh, polarization control ability to develop also higher order modulation scheme and to develop different communication systems that could offer uh, multiplexing gain and diversity gain in the degree freedom that offer pi polarization. So thank you very much for your attention and looking to have all the, your questions. Great. Uh, thanks, Imad. Thanks. Uh, so um, I was wondering, uh, so when you decouple the, uh, the the transmitter or the, the the power the power feeder right in this scheme, yeah. you decouple it from uh, 
from the transmitter. You're basically using an external external power source, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that means that your um, your energy, your 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 transmitter information is, is is very energy efficient, right? Yeah, especially if you use like an ambient RF source that is not dedicated for this communication, like existing the environment. But yeah, it will be like it's very yeah. efficient, and also it is very efficient because it doesn't have an RF chain power amplifier. It only levers the reflection of the yeah. And potentially, you could also use, I guess, that RF source for several transmitters then. Exactly true. Like for several reasons and singular, uh, singular source. Okay. And then on one of your figures, you had um, you had uh, basically when you plot your performance, you do it. You don't do it through uh, with the SNR, right? Which is more uh, the traditional. You you plot yeah. it versus the area, right? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, of course you can't plot it versus the SNR because it, at the end it's a link budget equation and you can't find analytically. SNR here, yeah. uh, but uh, like for certain peak transmitted here, certain noise power for certain configuration distance, uh, under this this area you have this performance. So it's there are multiple ways to present mm. your uh, performance, but so, uh, I believe this is good way because what matters is the least surface area. You know? Yeah, this exactly. Part, yeah. Yeah. So, so when you plot here, for instance, in this, oh, this is your example, right? Your case, you you go up to one or two square meters typically in order to, yeah. to, to really get low low bit error rates, right? This is uncoded, I guess. So, so yeah, uh, yeah this uh, uncoded. Would could you say that it in terms of in terms of size or form factor that this is perhaps inefficient? Uh, why it's inefficient? Well, you need a large, you need, you need a large, a uh, large area for, yeah, your, but, for your for your space. Yeah, yeah, I get your point. But this for this kind of location of our stores, receiver, yeah. and this, so you know, it may be ten centimeters square be sufficient for certain other uh, like configuration. Uh. So it depends like this. But of course, one of the fundamental uh, drawbacks of this, it's yeah. like uh, unfavorable post loss model. Yeah. So it's uh, more uh, favorable to use this for short communication, short uh, length mm -hmm. communication, because mm -hmm. it has very unfavorable possible loss yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, excellent. Thanks a lot. Um,